Your kit will arrive in two cardboard boxes which will contain the two motors, the controller, the cables, the controller housing bracket and fixing screws, a little pot of grease to help with uh, the assembly, selection of screws, two motor pulleys to go with the motors and then with the uh, pre-order kits we're also including the spacer and uh, DSC lead. Okay, before we get started to uh, do the main assembly, there's a little bit of a preparation work we can do beforehand. And the first thing to do is to take the pulley housing uh, cover off. Um, and we can show you what's inside there. So the pulley housing will come off just by taking these five bolts out. Uh, M3, so that requires a 2.5mm Allen key. pulley housing cover. Inside you'll have the motor pulley uh, belt itself, tensioner which can move backwards and forwards to put a bit of tension on the, uh, the drive belt on the final step of the assembly and then at the top there is the motor pulley itself. So one thing we can do uh, is just to make sure that just during the assembly the, the, the motor pulley fits through the bearing okay. That should be a nice sliding fit like that. Just nice and uh, tight fit but a sliding fit. There we go. That's good. Second thing we can do is to just preset the grub screws which hold this pulley onto the um, worm shaft. And we can do that just by fitting it temporarily onto the, onto the worm shaft. Set the grub screws so they're just not quite contacting the shaft and that allows us to put the, the pulley on uh, during the assembly and uh, it won't need so many turns on the Allen key which we can only really do by a flat at a time once the uh, pulley is in its housing. So we'll preset these two grub screws uh, by fitting on temporarily onto the, uh, the worm shaft. Now the worm shaft's got a flat on it, so if we move that to the bottom, it just makes sure that the grub screws are contacting a, a part of the diameter that hasn't got the flat on it. So we'll just fit that onto the worm shaft. Just touch the grub screw onto the shaft on both of those. And then you can back off by maybe about an eighth or a quarter of a turn and the pulley's ready then to be fitted on the final stage. Do that to the second one while we're here. Fit onto the shaft. Just nip those up gently. And go back just less than a quarter of a turn. And it'll save a lot of fiddling when we come to the, uh, the final stage of fitting the pulleys. And just before we fit the uh, main motor housing we just got to take these um, worm end caps off, which you can use a pair of circlip pliers or our NEQ6 uh, bearing removal tool, which has got two pins in just to remove the end cap. Or if you haven't got that, quite often you can just use two Allen keys in the holes and then give that a good twist to uh, remove the or slacken the end cap and then just unscrew the end cap. Put that away safely. Uh, it's not used for the motor tracking kit, but uh, yeah, put that in a safe place for possible use um, in the future. And finally, just before we fit the motor onto the, uh, the worm block and the, uh, the mount, just check to make sure the four tapped holes in the end of the, uh, the worm block are, uh, are clear and the bolts go in freely on each of those four holes. We can also just prepare the, um, the, the bolts with a little tiny dab of grease on each of the four bolts just to help assembly and, uh, and future dis disassembly and pop the, pop the washer on ready to, uh, to mount the, the motor. Yeah. So you've got the motor and the pulley housing. These four clearance holes correspond to the four tapped holes in the end of the, the worm block and it's just a simple case of using the M4 by 12 uh, cap head bolt with a washer and fit in four of those into the, uh, the worm block to secure the motor to the worm block.
poco. And finish off the final two and just centralise that and nip it up. And just to specify the, the tightening torque for these, uh, these bolts, recommend up to two newton metres, but if you haven't got a torque wrench, that's the equivalent of tightening the bolt with the short end of the Allen key, about as much as you can, and then just a fraction more. Now fit the 36 tooth pulley onto the, uh, the worm shaft. Just move the jockey wheel out of the way, give you a little bit of uh, extra access. It's best to set the flat of the worm shaft about the 11 o'clock position. And then first of all, set the first grub screw onto that flat. Push the pulley all the way onto the shaft. And you can get about one flat at a time, which is why we preset the grub screw as close as possible in the first step. Just give that a nip. Do the same to the other grub screw, but just a little bit less of a tighten because it's not on a flat, it's just on the worm shaft itself. And that's the pulley fitted. And now to fit the belt onto the pulleys, just move the tension roller to the left side. Get the belt onto the two pulleys. There we go. Just tension the belt with a little tensioner. You've got to hold that pulley in place or that idler in place just as you tighten up. Otherwise it moves like that. That's it. And just a little bit of tension doesn't want to be more than that, and that's uh, ready for fitting the cover back on. You can add a little bit more grease onto these bolts. They've been done at the factory. Snip them up. Finish those off and they only need uh, to be tightened with holding the short end just to secure the uh, front cover on. And check that the motor turns, or the pulley turns, you'll be able to feel the motor. If you wish you can take the uh, handles off the slow motion shafts and fit those onto the end of the motor shafts. And that uh, completes the installation of the, the motor onto the altitude axis. I've just repeated the steps uh, to fit the azimuth as we did for the uh, altitude axis. So that motor is fitted and now we can fit the, um, the control housing on the rear of the mount. So the first thing to do is to attach the bracket onto the two M5 tapped holes on this side. Orientation is this keyhole slot to the left as you're looking at it and we use the countersunk bolts to fit that onto the rear of the mount. As before we can put a little bit of grease on the bolts just to assist with the assembly and disassembly in the future, if necessary. They can be tightened up. So now to fit the control housing into its bracket, it's best to fit a screw in the top right hole, as you look in the rear, and that fits into the keyhole slot on the rear of the bracket which makes it a little bit easier to align the rest of the, the bolts. I 
Okay. So, fit the four bolts in and just nip them up with the Allen key. And that secures the uh, controller to its uh, bracket. And now I just fit the cables, the shorter, thinner ones are the encoders, the longer, fatter cables for the motors. Just pop them in their sockets. That's the azimuth and elevation for altitude. And that's ready to go for a test. And this spacer, which is included with uh, all the pre-orders, will actually be a, an optional extra on uh, future orders, just allows longer Vixen bars to, to clear the motor. Uh, just spaces off the, uh, the saddle that little bit to, um, to give us the necessary clearance. And now plug in your 12 volt DC power supply, turn on the mount and go to your uh, Wi-Fi on the tablet or phone to uh, set up the connection to the, the controller. To connect your phone to the AZ100 Wi-Fi hotspot, go to the Wi-Fi settings in your phone or tablet, connect to the AZ100, some systems might say connect uh, when internet not available, agree to that. Bring up uh, the browser, Google or Chrome, Firefox, type in the Wi-Fi address into the address bar which is 192.168.4.1 to bring up the mounts web page. Okay, now the mounts connected, you can see at the top bar you've got the time, the GPS, Wi-Fi, Altenaz, uh, which the encoder is in red at the moment, and Altenaz motors which are in green. If you move the mount manually, uh, the system detects that the encoders are, uh, are working and those icons will go green, which confirms the, um, the mount is successfully connected. You can turn the motors on now with the uh, red button at the bottom. Double tap a particular object or star. Top go to and the mount will slew to that particular object. Functions at the bottom of the screen are uh, the align, which uh, will actually show the two align uh, buttons. So you can turn them on off with the align. You can switch the rate between uh, sidereal, lunar, or solar. Night mode is pretty self explanatory. The configuration, there's various configurations in, in that menu for uh, maximum slew speed acceleration. Uh, you can put a default. Uh, longitudinal latitude uh, reference in case you're in an area of bad G, uh, GPS uh, signal. Uh, magnitude filter just uh, selects the magnitude at which the stars or objects on the screen are uh, displayed or not displayed. And various other settings which we'll go through in a, a separate video or the instruction manual. And that concludes the setup of the AZ100 motor kit. Thank you very much for watching.